page 60 if you want to follow along. But if, if you don't have a guidebook to draw along, uh, you can go to Job chapter 38. Uh, just quickly, there you go, there you go. Uh, one of those ladies in the kitchen, like Mrs. Cape as well, that was that was her. Just knowing what to do, thinking on their feet, getting the job done. Does somebody need, we have some books that we can share. Does somebody, does somebody, does somebody, would someone like a book? Raise your hand. Okay, all right, thanks for asking. So, so remember the book of Job, we're going to go real fast. Uh, a man that in the beginning uh, feared God, eschewed evil, right? And then the, the meeting up in heaven between God and the devil. And the, the God says, has thou considered my servant Job? And so on. And so uh, the devil is uh, given permission by God to take away all his stuff, uh, the children, all that kind of stuff. And then it, then it severely impacted his health. And remember how that beautiful picture of that initial response was to uh, mourn. But that was good to know that it's okay with God when we suffer loss, loss of health, loss of a loved one, that it's okay with God if we mourn. He did. But not long after that, he, he uh, worshiped God. And then he sang praises to God. I'll never, I'll never sing that song again, blessed be the name of the Lord, without thinking of Job. That initial response, what a neat example. Of our response, and then, and then throughout the next couple of weeks, we understood. Remember, remember the last week or two. Uh, this was Job uh, uh, lived this, and this was written in the, the Word of God before even the Ten Commandments were given. Mm -hmm. and, and so, the point was that Job was who he was because of his relationship with Jesus Christ, and he had a covenant relationship with God. That's what you and I have when you're if you're saved. God's entered into this covenant. It's a very strong, powerful relationship, stronger than even marriage, but that's maybe the, the closest earthly example of it. And because of his relationship, he loved God, and he wanted to live right because he knew turning away from evil pleased a holy God. And then he also realized that to disobey God, like, like the New Testament verse, Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And so he wanted to live right because of his relationship with God, which is what should define our lives. If we're not careful. You know, we were, we were raised in a religious system, say, God saves you by faith. And if you're not careful, you go back to trying to live the law instead of just living by the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and being motivated by love for God. The three guys come along, right? And they, 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 they were bringing to Job all they knew. That, gee, if you're suffering, it must be a result of sin. And uh, while some of what they said, said, much of it is true in some lives, whatsoever man soweth, that shall I also reap. Uh, as many as the Lord chasteneth, as many as the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. So sometimes suffering is a result of my sin or yours. Sometimes the suffering is a result of God's chastening. Ask a little child that's ever been spanked by daddy. How'd that feel? Pain. And pain can be, uh, can, pain, pain can, can uh, uh, mold and shape our character. But, but what they were saying was, did not apply to Job. It was not his circumstance. He loved God, loved God, trying to obey God and all that. So these guys were really getting on him. Job lost it, all that kind of stuff. But then finally, I think around Job chapter 28, he starts, remember about gold? People value gold, and what they value, they know how to dig it out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was, Job was saying, wisdom, I need wisdom. I value wisdom, and I'm seeking the source of all wisdom, which is God Almighty, Jesus Christ. So he was turning to God for answers. Put, put, put what I'm going through, Lord, in some kind of biblical framework. Not only Job, but us. And we talked about sometimes uh, we're suffering, and so as soon as possible, go to God, not try to figure it out necessarily. I mean, I mean, I, I always do it. Hey, have I sinned, Lord? Are you ch are, are you chasing me, or am I reaping what I sow? But if I if I don't get a, I'm just going to pray to God, help me to understand what's going on. But sometimes we're a comforter. Now I made it real small this week because I wanted to emphasize that God is sovereign over all this. But sometimes. We need to comfort others. And so if you have the bonus material sheet, remember remember if God calls you, and, and what a marvelous ministry that you, you, you could comfort somebody else. They're going, you could, gee, they're going through that through a that, That's not me. <laughs> or, Lord, how can I be of service? 
how can I comfort those poor souls that are suffering? It could be, you know, the, the hurricane victims, or it could be a loved one. It could be your son or daughter, or someone very close to you. And because of your closeness to them, it'd be very appropriate for God to use you to comfort them. So you could be a sufferer, or you could be a comforter. Most of us will be both in the course of our lives. And that's why the Bible says that when we're suffering and the God of all comfort comforts you, that you are then to comfort others with the same comfort where you are comforting God. So this whole ministry of comfort was there. And, and what are you going to do like we have there? You're going you're gonna to point them to Jesus Christ. Now they might be lost. You're pointing them to Jesus Christ. If they got a complaint, how about bringing it to the creator, God? Well, you got to be a son or a daughter of God. Lead them to faith in Jesus. Or even if they are saved. Now, when they, now they know they should go to Jesus. Now they know they should be praying and so on. But sometimes the, you know, the, the, the pain and the suffering... It just kind of clouds him, just like Joel. He didn't really seek hard the face of God until like halfway through the book. So you can lead them to Jesus. Let's go. Let's. I'll go forward with you, and we'll pray at the altar. Or let's let's have a word of prayer right here before we have this next sip of coffee. So you want to lead them to Jesus. Then you, another thing, you want to love them unconditionally. Remember. You might have to be patient because then they're suffering. They might say some things rash. They might say some things that, oh, wow. And you're, you're tempted. Well, okay. Uh, this is not the time. But, but, but in your heart, you'd say, like, well, screw you. Okay. I'm done with you. Okay. You do that. Mm, you miss the opportunity. So you and I have to be very, very patient. We have to understand that they are suffering. Okay. And then and he says, you know, my, what my wife told me the other day, what? She said, why don't you just curse God and die? Oh, so then you, no, I, she was suffering too. Wait a minute. Let's wait a minute. They are hurting. They are suffering. How about we just take about 99% of everything they're saying and just let it roll off their back and be patient and love them. So the next one was uh, we're going to remember the judge. And that was you and I got to be careful that we're not so quick to, to judge. Now, remember, they're judging, discerning. We're always discerning. Is it salt? Is it sweet? And everything. And you're always, Joel, throughout the book, is trying to discern what in the world is going on. So we're always discerning, but not judging in a condemning way. Like his buddies were. Well, see, your kids died. It's probably because they, they, they've lived a sinful life. Now, you know, if you read in the neighborhood that they were supposed to be these godly children, but hey, they died. It was brutal. They had to be sinful. That's what they said to him. Okay, so we're not going to be uh, judging in a condemning way. Because who is the judge? God Almighty. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to approach in meekness. Remember, some of the guys came a little, it was a little contentious, a little proud, because what they thought was right. And so that, that's where pride can enter in. Well, here's what I think, and I, I don't to let you say, and he's not listening, and back and forth, and it was a contentious argument. And we're, uh, what does the Bible say? Only by pride come a contention. We're not going to approach someone that way. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, we're going to approach in meekness. Why? Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The day's going to come where I'm going to be on the other side. So we're going to be meek. God, God's got it. And then, and then we're going to uh, we're going to seek the Lord because of His wisdom, the source of all wisdom. So you can seek God because He's God. Seek God because He's your per, your your Savior. Seek God because He's your Father. Seek God because He's your Provider. But how about seek God because He's the source of all wisdom, not Oprah Winfrey. Okay, I just said that to keep you away. All right. So so so, so the, the idea of praying to God because whatever He's going to say is going to be right. And it's going to be said in love. Pray to him for his wisdom. And then last week it was listening to God. Listen. Okay, so, so, so that's kind of, now we're going to finish up. So if, if you know, like you folks uh, from Arkansas or Texas, I love the way you talk. If, if you weren't here for the whole lesson, this is the end. So like you get to jump right to the end of the book. Okay? <laughs> or this is cool movie, cool movie, but I got to watch the car. Oh, okay, I'm going to. Go right to the end of the movie, see the end. So this is the end. So this is kind of a, hopefully, God, uh, and I'll stumble through this, but let's grab a hold of maybe the summary of all this thing. All right? So, so let's take a look. Page 60, uh, the idea, uh, the, the title of the lesson is, What Am I Supposed to Learn? So I've heard Pastor Jim. I've, I've had the, the honor of sitting by and just, Lord, help me know what to say. Help me. Otherwise, just, Lord, help me just shut up and stay out of the way. But Pastor Jim is talking, and he'll talk to somebody and their circumstances, and boy, you can tell they're suffering a variety of things, financial, relationships, physical, you name it, any different loss, all that kind of stuff, and he'll have you been praying to the Lord? Yeah, have you been seeking the face of God? Okay, and he'll say, you know, what do you think God is saying to you? 
So, so we can do that. We can do that with our loved ones. Have you prayed to God? Have you sought the, the face of Almighty God? What has he said? Has he revealed anything? You, you're trying to learn from it. That's the question. And so, so, so we'll have this answer. Let's take a look. I like to do this. I like to just say the answer when we go through it. And I'll say it again at the end. But, but like the author says, that Job discovered more deeply that God is a loving, heavenly Father who expects his people to acknowledge him as their Lord at all times. Think about that. Easy to acknowledge God when things are going good. Okay, but how about during suffering? And some people, not anybody here, not anybody in our church, but they go through suffering and things aren't going the way you want them to go and you become, what's the word, the D word? Bitter. You become bitter, remember? So I made somebody smile because bitter people that are bitter a lot, you know, hey, how are you? I'm doing fine. Everything's good. Sunset. What's the matter with your face? Because you've been bitter way too long. Your face gets that way. Oh, what a beautiful day out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, wasn't that preaching with wasp? Something that doesn't make sense here is because, you know, things haven't gone their way for a long time like Job and so on, and they get bitter, and Job was bitter. It says right in here. But he got better. Because he had an encounter with God that revealed God and who he was, who God is, and who Job is, and it strengthened that relationship. So let's let's take a look. All right, so the very first uh, part of today's lesson, remember he's seeking God, seeking God, seeking God, and waiting on the Lord. And for you and I, that's seeking him in the pages of his book. That, that, that's you and I coming expectantly every Sunday morning. That past, This is not the word of pastor, but and we're taking the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. The word of God which liveth and abideth forever, like it says in the Bible. Okay, so we come expectingly, whether we're suffering or not, that if God's going to say something, it's going to matter, and it applies to me. So I come, that's why I sit in the front. I don't want a bunch of heads and movement, because I want to be, I want to hear it. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to me? I'll, I'll talk to you later. The word of God's being preached. Why? Because of how you view God. I, we want to live according to what God says. So you listen, you listen. But remember now, it's not just listening one in one ear out the other. There's going to be response. What's the pastor always say? That's why there's an invitation. When you hear the word of God, God expects you to re respond. Moses, okay, Lord, I'm going to Egypt. <laughs> okay, Noah, okay, all right, call stock lumber. <laughs> We need a bunch of whatever it is now. We need a bunch of wood. We gotta build an ark. Okay, so so are you gonna respond in obedience? All right, so let's take a look. Job chapter 38. That make you laugh? What? Go on. Moses built the ark. Okay. All right, just test it. No. Okay. Not enough coffee. You're right. Just go on. Just go on. Okay. But how many of you understand we're talking about responding to the word of God? God says something, and you're going to have to respond. He expects that every Sunday. We're talking about Joel, but more importantly, it's about your life, how you live, right? All right, so in the first section, page 62, Job 38, God speaks. Okay, and Joseph, uh, Job is listening. It says, listen to God. Let's read. Job 38, verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me, where hast thou, where wast thou, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. It's, it's so many times throughout the study, when God goes on here, if, you, if you've read chapter 38, 39, 40, 41, I think it is, God starts asking all these questions. That Job doesn't have an answer for. And Rod, from your study and so on, if you want to add to this, but God is saying in verse 2, well, number number one, then the Lord answered. And the idea of the Lord, the author brings, this is the Lord. Like we've been talking, it's the Lord. And, and so many times, our idea of who God is is too small. It's too human. But throughout Scripture, when people have an encounter with God, they're changed. I think of Habakkuk, who had that complaint about the country from the north, and then when God spoke to him, it changed everything. Um, Isaiah, the prophet, when, when he stood before God, remember, 
and the holy, holy, holy. And he had that encounter with God, and he said, woe is me. You know, I'm, I'm undone. He felt it just fell apart because of God's holiness, because of God's sovereignness. Uh, Peter, was it Peter in the New Testament when Jesus, you know, uh, after he rose and he came and, and, and or, or, or I don't know exactly the circumstance, but I remember Peter saying, depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man, stuff like that. So when you have an encounter with God, you're struck by his holiness. You're struck by his infinite understanding. I, there's a verse in the Bible I, I have under on the bonus material sheet on, under number one. Great is our great is our Lord and a great power. His understanding is infinite. So, so over the course of my life and hopefully yours, your idea of God becomes more accurate, more true, it's, it's greater than what you thought yesterday. Okay, and, his, and his understanding is infinite, the Bible says. So that, that was just right there, the fact that God was speaking to Job. Okay, but here's where it really matters. When God speaks to you in your suffering or in the suffering of your children, and they come into the church house and the pastor's preaching, and it's like, you know, everyone else could just leave because this is meant directly for me. Or maybe in the quietness in the backyard, you're going for a walk, you're opening the pages of God's book, and God speaks to you. There's something that's hard to describe. It's God. You're struck by, by his word because of who he is, the Lord. Hopefully that's that's a part of your Christianity. That reverence for God. That recognition of his sovereignty over all the universe, but over your life. Oh, I miss that. If it's not that way, then God has a little work to do in you and me. And that's very likely we've talked about that suffering sometimes God uses it to get your attention oh how many times I've visited someone up in the hospital and I've heard him say you know God's got my attention and so God can use that suffering because he's got something to say and he wants you to listen that's where Job was and that's where God will orchestrate the events of your life so that when he speaks he has your undivided 100% attention. I think of Paul. Knocked him off the horse, right? He had his attention. To Lord, what will thou have me to do? Okay, that's, what, that's what this is. So, so you, you can't miss that. Oh, you just eat praise God. No, 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 you're missing it. Unless you grab a hold of what we just talked about. All right, so it says in verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words of, without knowledge? In other words, God is saying, who is this that doesn't know what he's talking about? Okay, if I can put it in simple words. Okay. And, and then, then he opens up for the next three chapters, maybe four, I forgot. But God is talking about where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth and all that kind of stuff. The whole, I'm trying to understand it, but God was, was revealing to Job his infinite understanding. And, and then I think Job felt just much more humbled by it. Why? So that Job was led to say, I'm going to trust God. Anybody else have anything to add from that first section, Lana? I think that Job, up to this point, had, had felt like he was being, being a disciple just of who he was. But now he's learning that a lesson from God about the difference between man and God and who God is. Thanks for saying that because if you and I seek God and we think, well, when we have this audience with God, you might or I might be thinking, well, then I'll just let God know how things are and he'll get on the same page with me. And, and then, <laughs> you get ready that it's going to be the reverse. Are you, or, or this, we're, we're going to get it in the next section. Uh, once God really knows my heart, then he's going to take care of things. Which he can do, and many times happen. But in this case, what I think happens is, as he gets closer to God and the holiness and the sovereignty of God, he sees his sin. Now that doesn't feel yippy skippy. Let's go have cotton candy. Hmm. That doesn't. But but the un 
end up with a deeper relationship and faith with God. Diane? Yeah. Let me see if I understand what you're saying. It's a marvelous point that we can talk to talk. We can talk about having faith, but then it's another thing when you live through suffering. tested and tried. Now, God knew it all along, but maybe it's a shock to them or a shock to me and you. But then it, that faith gets exercised, and here's where we have an opportunity. We can stay in our bitterness because we're suffering, or we can draw closer to God like Job did, and we can, our faith can be exercised, and anything that gets exercised gets stronger, gets better. Your devotion increases to God, and that, that's an accomplishment, possibly, of suffering. Well, there's Bible passage about drawing closer to God and he'll give you the desires of your heart. That doesn't mean the desires you've already got in your heart. It will mean he will make the desires of your heart to be what he wants them to be, the closer you draw to him. He, he changes those out, you might say, and takes out the, the junk and puts in the right things, and then you start wanting the right things. So that's what happened to him. So we can think on this for ourselves, think on this for our children, while we, we are feeling bad when our children are suffering, we can have hope that God's at work in their lives. Might be accomplishing these very things that we're talking about. My God, hurry up and get, get it done, though. <laughs> we need to watch them suffer. An awareness of this. Rock? our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. But it's another thing to see it. Uh, and I, I would imagine in the course of your lives, you've seen some things physically by God's creation and made you think of God. Did you not? Anyone call something? I went out west hunting. I see the Rocky Mountains. And, uh, and I just thought of God. They were so gigantic and so majestic. I just made me think of God. I heard this week, for example, if you, if you got an, uh, about uh, something about the sun, that that a, a pinhead, maybe some of you heard it on Christian radio, yeah. a pinhead, a pinhead of the energy that comes from the sun exceeds all the power that humans have created throughout all of human history. So you're blown away. <laughs> yeah, I was like. And then, then of course, and, and and the one who created the sun and keeps it is God. <laughs> So this, this glimpse of the greatness of Almighty God, this great power, uh, so, so God blesses us by revealing that in our lives. Any other things that come to mind? Or maybe it's the beauty of God. Yes. I see the red cardinals and the flowers. The beauty of God's creation, the variety. You know, makes you appreciate the variety and, and 
all of us. Are. Did, did, when you were there, you see the vastness of it, and did you did you think of God? Good, good, good. Lance. That's where we get our value, our purpose, the love of Almighty God. Just incredible, incredible. And that God wants to have this intimate relationship with us uh, is just the most precious thing in our lives. Okay, good, good, we got it, we got it. All right, so so we're listening to God, and, and then not only what he's saying, but, but all the things that we've talked about here, how we're stirred inside. And then now let's go to page 63. We're jumping ahead. So so, so God reveals, like, like Rod was saying, Paul about creation and so on. So then Job's going to speak. Here we are. Uh, Job chapter 42, the Bible says this in verses 1 to 6. Uh, and here's the idea. It's, it's one thing to, to, to hear. It's another thing to submit or obey. Like, like you were talking, Diane. You know? Okay, so, so in verse 1, the Bible says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. And that no thought can be withheld from thee. Boy, do you hear that intimacy there? And recognizing the power and the greatness of God, his omnipotence, his omniscience, omniscience, all of that. Verse 3. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? You know who that was? It was him. Who was the one that was talking and not knowing what he was talking about? It was him. All right. All right. <laughs> who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Like Rod was mentioning. Verse 4, here I beseech thee. Now, now see his prayer life. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I have I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. He, he had an encounter with God. Now, I don't know if he physically saw God. I don't think so. It's like the eye of his understanding. Oh, I, I see something more about God. What was revealed. And remember, we talked about that. When you have a, a, a closeness, God reveals it's almighty God, the eternal God, invisible. And he reveals himself to you. <coughs> You're probably, and this was so good because over the course of my life, I've had these times where I feel really bad about who I am and what I am, my sinfulness. And yet now, you know what, this is, this is how it looks. Isaiah, Job, Job is getting closer to God. His faith is getting exercised. His, his faith and his, his relationship with God is getting deeper. He is closer to God. But as you get closer to God, you're going to see your sinfulness. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. After we get saved, the Holy Spirit's always working in you and me. But generally, it's out with the bad and in with the good. So from time to time, God's putting in the good, uh, love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, all of that, how wonderful that is. But then there's times where you see your sinfulness. That's just what Job is saying here. But now, my eye seeth thee. It's like a face to face. But look what the next verse says. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. So get ready. That's kind of what that looks like sometimes. As you, as you understand God more intimately and his holiness, you're going to be aware of your sinfulness, just like Isaiah, just like Job did. So, so it's good to know. Everybody aware of that? Mm -hmm. 
dust, dust and ashes. <coughs> They're physical representations of what was happening in the person's heart. And what was that? Repentance. Repentance is what? Turning to God in a deeper, more personal and intimate way. So that's under that submitting to God. You and I can do that. You and I, God wants us to do that. You and I, that's, that's how that process is going to look as we get closer to Almighty God. And then we're going to know his comfort, we're going to know his love and all that. But uh, we're going to be conformed to the image of his, of his dear son. So you can read all those verses, but then going through the suffering. And all of a sudden, you know what? The suffering, look what it's accomplishing in his life. Mm -hmm. Wow. No, was it worth it? Yes, it was. So you and I, kind of God's given us a glimpse because he's wrote written the book of Job for us. And now we, we can see this suffering and like we have over the last couple of months, you know, where Job didn't have, didn't understand what was going on. Neither were we. But we're seeing the end now. Job, Job was bitter for a while, but then he became better. He, he wasn't, he did not stay in that bitterness. God revealed himself. Job listened and obeyed, submitted. Let that sex. All right, page 65, Job chapter 42. Now we're just going verses 7 and 9. It says in verse 7, Job 42, verse 7, the Bible says, And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, he, uh, the Lord said unto Now remember, these are the three guys. Okay. Uh, Eliphaz, the Temanite, uh, my wrath is kindled against thee. Whoa, boy. <laughs> and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my ser servant Job had. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly. And that ye have not spoken of me the thing that which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuite and Zophar the Naamathite went and did according as the Lord commanded them the Lord also accepted Job. So right in here, there's at least two things. Let's keep moving along. But one of them is a word of caution to you and me or anyone who might jump quickly to explain why bad things happen to others. <clears throat> now, if you've been coming to class, you should have heard that already. But, but, but here is a word right from God himself. That these people were coming and telling somebody else who was suffering, well, it must be because of sin, and God must be chastising you. Would we all agree God didn't go for that? <laughs> I mean, the same holy God that we just, well, we saw got real quiet there for a couple seconds because we were just like reverencing God and his word and everything. This God right here says to these guys, I don't like what you are saying because it's not right. You're talking about me. You're implying that I'm doing this and that's not the way I am. Oh, man. I would have been, I'd have been going to Walmart for like a 12 pack of, of underwear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> come on, just kind of make it real, right? Okay, so come on. Oh man, you stick. Okay, I have my daughter in Texas, so we, we, we record this and I put it on YouTube so she can hear it through daddy. Oh, can, can we cut that out, baby? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you get the idea. Can you imagine how they felt? Can you imagine how God's speaking to these? Oh man. So 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 to me it's like like we've talked. Uh, uh, the, uh, we talked about in the last couple weeks, remember the judge. Remember who's going to judge, not me, not you, but even this week, we were talking with Joy and Kathy that I became aware of a circumstance, and if my heart didn't race, you know, faster than the speed of, you know, of electricity, and my heart was there, like, no, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't think, don't condemn them, when I don't have the facts, I have limited understanding, God has infinite understanding, Rick, don't do that, and I kind of, the Spirit of God rebuked me, even this past week, don't do that. Because I do not have all understanding. Only God does. Go back to this. Then I had another French fry. Okay? <laughs> so, so this can happen so quickly because your heart, you know. That, that's a real human, human characteristic. Yeah. And I think that we all need to be aware of that we jump to conclusions based on what we have heard about. And like you say, we don't even have all the facts. And what we perceive is going on. And um, we, that happened to us this last week, too. And, we just, you know, so it's a blessing in a way because maybe a couple of months ago I'd have done it and just kept on going, you know. But now at least 
I, we're, we're hearing the word of God. God's putting this in me. And I'm like, stop. No, don't do that. Just like, you know, driving down, like I would say, driving down the road, you see the, the girl coming in the bikini, jogging, you know, and the spirit of God tells you to look the other way. Same thing now. I'm thinking in a condemning way, that's wrong, that's wrong. The spirit of God reveals that to me. Shut up, shut up. I'm wrong. Don't do it. Don't do it. Same thing. God corrects you. The spirit of God can correct you on this matter. It's, it's wonderful. down fire and brimstone and disintegrate him right there on the spot. He was very lovingly, hey, you did wrong. But he, and, and what a blessing that God revealed. I mean, if God reveals his love, great, but if God reveals to you what he loves, how marvelous. I love strawberries. Oh, great, great. But, but if he reveals what he doesn't like, that's just as precious. You know, I think in the way he gave him his task, it also shows his wisdom. Because what he See if I understand what you're saying. So God has always given given them and you and me a way back to get right with Him. But along the way, God will also include and encourage us to get right with those that we've wronged. So we, we get right with God and then we go say sorry to the one we've offended and so on. God wanted to assure that that was going to take place. And then, and then I'll just finish your thought. I know you're thinking the same thing. Then he asked Job to pray. And, and isn't that interesting? How do you think Job might have felt at some point throughout those weeks or months about these buddies? <laughs> but now, God, now, they, now he's got to pray for them. And I thought of Matthew 5, where it says, you know, how, we're, how we are, uh, Matthew 5, 44, 45, I might have thrown it in there. Yeah, yeah, Jesus said, but I stand to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, so God is all about reconciling. Reconciling with God, number one, and then what? Reconciling with those horizontal. So, so he, he, he's, he's, he's putting those three guys in, in that, on that path to get right with God. And oh, by the way, you know, to go to Job. Then he's asking Job to pray. And so when they're all done, I bet you they were best buddies, and they went and had a root beer. Because God wanted it, wanted there to be peace. So that's repentance. You get right with God, but you get right with the human beings. That's important, by the way. Oh, I got right with God, but you hate so and so's guts. You see the difference? But I'll never. I, I, no, I got it under the blood. But I, oh, they haven't. You know, I haven't talked to that person for 14 years. Not exactly right. I'll forgive, but I'll let forgive. There you go. There you go. So, so, so there, there's a work of God in there. Of getting right with God and then having the courage to go and talk to so and so, and then he he's got to pray. You see all that at work there? That was marvelous. And, and hence the wisdom of God and the heart of God that He wants all His children to play nice together. But we all got a part in that, and God gives us the ability. That's a great point, Rob. Appreciate that, Lana. Right, right. I mean, let's, let's just, another way of saying it is, through this suffering, all, all these men grew in the faith. Doesn't that sound nice? He'll grow in the faith. <laughs> but what does it look like? Job now is praying for people that despitefully used him. And he suffered. And these guys have to humble themselves and go get right. And that's growing in faith. By, because of your relationship with God, you're interacting. I remember with Paul. Remember Paul? Uh, 
Pontecchio? Remember, remember you said there, there's really a third group here. There's the comforters and the sufferers, sufferers and the, what was this? What did you call them? Attackers. The attackers. Okay, so you know what? God's at work over all this thing and, and these, these comforters and everything. At some point, they're going to be praying for the attackers. Mm -hmm. I bet you, you and your wife have. <laughs> it's honest. It's, it's honest. 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 Yeah. But you see, that, that, that's a, we're looking at what happened here. Historically, it happened great, great. But let's take what the Word of God implies to our own lives. We're, we're trying to help somebody. There's going to be some attackers that get in the way. And if God's at work sovereign over all of this, we're going to be praying for them. Got, got. Okay, let's move on. So then lastly, page 66, the last. Uh, so we've talked about listening to God, but it's more than just hearing the words. There, there's going to be that response, which should be a yielding, like it says in the book of Romans, or a submitting and obedience. Why? A motive of love, of, of understanding, a greater understanding of the greatness of God and the power of God and the, the forgiveness of God that will enable you to forgive others. And it will enable you to do these things we just talked about and pray for those that cause you a lot of heartache and so on. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to rely on God. In other words, I, I took it as it's just not a one-time event. It can be a process and a one-time event, and then there's a surrendering, there's a weeping, there's a crying, there's a seeing God for who he is greater and all that. But now, now you're changed, and you go on. You don't go back. So you continue to rely on God. Yeah, there you go. So it says in verse 10, Job 42, verse 10, 12, the Bible says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. In other words, God turned everything around. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren, Job's brethren, and all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold, so that the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. So the author points out, now don't think when you get right with God, God's going to just pros prosper you. The main points were this. The author, I'll just read them. It says, uh, number one, the author said, you read that text, the Lord is a giving God and we can never outgive him. I agree. Verse two, uh, next point, Satan was wrong. Remember Satan? Now, now, if I didn't do it, forgive me, forgive me. But, but all this suffering, all the suffering that went through the book of Job, you know who's part of that? Satan. Oh, it's all. So, so let, me, let me make a point now then. You mean, Rick, in the course of my suffering, Satan might have a part of that? <laughs> Forgive me for not mentioning it earlier. But remember, we had at least three enemies, right? The world, well, not the world, the flesh, and the devil. Isn't that interesting that those three guys, Job, throughout that whole book, none of them mentioned the devil? That dirty lying snake, that scoundrel, that accuser of the brethren, all that kind of stuff. Isn't that interesting? Even when God, and God didn't even bring it up. God revealed himself, and, and Job overcame. And Satan was wrong. Job was more devoted to God, not less, as a result of his suffering. Well, there you go. And that's what I have in the bonus material. You and I have the opportunity to become more devoted. This is number four. You and I can become more devoted to God, not less, as a result of your and my suffering. Now the, the, the author didn't bring this out, but I thought about it. Earlier on, even in this section, Job had become bitter because of the suffering. We understand how that can feel. But boy, be careful, be careful, be careful. You don't stay in that bitterness. You're going to see God. If you see God, God's going to reveal something, a truth. You're going to see him for who he is. And you have the opportunity to have the same thing that happens in your life or your children or your grandchildren or anybody you love. And the end can be like Job, where Job was better. Bitter. On the contrary, if that doesn't happen, I think of all the, some of the verses that talk about bitterness. I have one down there in under number four, C as the cat, what not to do. The Bible talks about Hebrews chapter 12 there. Remember where, uh, as the many as the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. it. Now this is not exactly Job's thing, but we're suffering because God could be chastening us, got it? If we don't respond appropriately to that chastening, what's going to happen? If the Bible says, looking diligently, diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, it refers to his discipline. God's doing that by his goodness, by his grace. If you fail of the grace of God, not salvation, it's discipline. Lest any root of what? Bitterness. 
bringing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. So, so you don't want to stay in that bitterness. That's not good. It's a root. And like the preachers say, where there's a root, there's a shoot. And where there's a shoot, there's fruit. And the fruit of bitterness is horrible. And you end up, your life is a wreck and it's sad. And they make movies about it. Mm -hmm. so, so you see the difference? Joel, what a marvelous, more devoted to God as a result of his suffering. You and I, more devoted to God because of the suffering God has allowed to happen. Even Satan's influence and so on because of our faith and our relationship with God got better, stronger. Just, just know the, know the uh, other path. You stay in your bitterness. Or he stays in her, she, they stay in their bitterness. Boy, in the root of bitterness. It's not good. I thought you better, I better talk about the grave. How, how wonderful is that? And Joel, what a great, I look forward to seeing them, you know. But, but there is the other path. Sadly, not mostly. Any other closing comments? Otherwise, we'll let we'll let the newberries <laughs> they'll get their voices ready, and we'll look forward to the worship. Uh, thank you again for being here. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you again so much for the word of God and the example of Job and and, and all the wisdom therein. It, it is like silver and gold, better, better. And now help us to continue to to seek it and desire it and, and long for it and pray for it, knowing that uh, it's all from you and help us now like like all preaching all teaching all, the word of god bring it to our remembrance help us to chew on it to meditate on it that it would further become just the fabric of our soul that we would have this wisdom and this instruction and help us to live according to it by faith we ask this now in jesus name amen amen, amen. thank you all enjoy the worship service